What's up, Facebook? What's up, Mortgage Coach Community? Dave Savage, Todd Bookspan, and special guest Cody Gibson coming live to you. Uh, myself and Cody are both outside of Portland, Oregon. Cody, it's not often I get to interview a fellow or is it Oregonian? Right. Yeah, we could just stand outside in the heat, but we're inside and it's nice. It's been pretty damn hot around here. So, uh, like, we're not good at this. We complain all winter about how it's cold. The second it's hot, we're like, "Whoa, it's too hot. What's happening?" Yeah. It, well, it was it was much too hot. And Todd Bookspan is live, uh, home of the Phoenix Suns. What's it What's it like out there with you right now, Todd? You know, it's a dry heat. I think that's our that's our advantage. You know, I've been up there in the summer when it's uh, hot and sticky, and no one has air conditioning. At least down here, everyone has air conditioning, and it may be 115, but it truly is a dry heat, and uh, yes, absolutely, go Suns. Right on, guys. So remember, guys, this is a mastermind. We want to get questions from you in the audience. While we've got some questions that we want to ask Cody, we have a theme of today's call, and that's how to win when you're losing. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to open up with some questions around that. But remember, guys, put your questions. If you're watching this live in Facebook, put your questions in comments. If you're watching this live in our Zoom community, put your questions below. And even if you're watching the recording, which is usually the biggest audience of this in our YouTube channel, put questions. We'll get them answered. And this will not be the last time we have Cody as a guest in the mortgage coach community. So, so Cody, we had you on stage for the Modern Real Estate Summit, and you were one of the top rated speakers and you opened it. So thank you for that, brother. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. It was it was uh, it was my pleasure to do it. Cool event. Uh, Mortgage Coach uh, killed it at that. You guys did really well. Well, thank you. Yeah, no, we're we're passionate about helping realtors sell more homes. And then we're passionate about helping loan officers turn advice into a competitive advantage. So so the community is getting to know you a little bit. I mean, obviously, I can intro, you know, Sky's one of the top speakers for Keller Williams. Uh, I don't know if you're the largest, but one of the largest expansion teams. Uh, last year, you guys did almost 1,100 um, homes sold. What are, what are you trending right now? You know, what is the kind of volume you're doing? And what is an expansion team, by the way? Some people like, are. What, yeah, what is thank that? you. Uh, we are by far the we're by far the largest in location size. And when, when we went down the road of expansion with a handful of my friends in 2009, 10 and 11, uh, we took a sharp left turn. I wonder every day if it was the right left turn, but we took a sharp left turn on how we were going to do expansion. But we're by far the largest for locations. We are in 100, um, 108 or 109 locations in the US, uh, 28 states, and we've just launched in our fifth country. And we've, uh, we just hired um, eight partners in uh, Cape Town, South Africa. Um, we're in Dominican Republic, we're in uh, Canada, we're in Mexico, we're in five countries. Um, but what we started doing was like expansion, the genesis of expansion was at some level as a real estate agent um, and as a mortgage originator, you're going to do so much business in your city or your area or your market of choice that at some point you look down. Now, I'll talk about a realtor. Let's say you hit a couple hundred sales in Portland, Oregon. At some point you look down, you go, it's going to be easier for me to add 100 sales somewhere else than to go from 200 to 300 in Portland or from 400 to 600. At some point, you hit some level of saturation that it's simpler to add it elsewhere. And if you have great systems, great models, great tools and a desire to win and you can lead people, why not take what you've been doing and basically go and franchise it? without the franchise, go and franchise it to other people to go and use it and say, listen, come and use my tools and systems in your city, in your state. We'll work under the same umbrella. We, we win more when we work together more, uh, we'll share the dollars. We can share the expenses. However you want to do it is fine. But this is really the, this is the era of the, when it comes to brokerage, this is the era of the agent. The sixties through the nineties was the era of the brokerage. The brokerage made the money. The realtor went out to someone's home and made a made a pitch or a presentation, hoped for the best, and brought the brought the contract back like they would have a dead animal in the 1700s. Back to camp. Here it is. 2000 to 2010 was almost the um, the era of we don't know what the hell we're doing. Like, remember, you guys remember because you're both older than dirt. You remember when realtors asked the question, "Should I get a website?" 
You guys both remember this. Oh, that was that was like the gold rush, you know. Yes, it's like like magic. You yeah, know? should I do it? Like, what, should I do it? And today, of course, the question is, how many should I have? Should they be stealth sites? Should they be uh, open sites? Should I have forced registration, unforced, like voyeuristic? Like, what? Like a realtor today? Do you have fifteen or do you have a dozen? Do you have ten? Like, what do you do? Um, anyway, so that was 2000 and 2010. I think we're living today in the era of the agent and the agent becoming truly the business. Some of my friends and I are doing more business as a realtor than almost any brokerage on the planet is doing. And I don't think that's stopping anytime soon. The only limit is how far you want to push this. And that's expansion. Love, love that. And no, we talk a lot about how as we evolve and the local referral-based provider, it is a team, teams are growing and you're either leading a team or you're working for a team or you're working in a, you know, online platform, but it's getting harder and harder to just be a individual uh, loan officer. Cause you, you gotta have systems, you gotta have processes. I have two more questions that I wanna get into the headline and the topic, but I, I know you are a speaker for bold you know, a bold for maps coaching at Keller Williams. So right. I know you've been on a lot of stages and you speak a lot to Keller Williams agents. Um, tell us a little bit about that. I want to make sure everybody knows what that is and, and any lessons from that that you think would be valuable to loan officers. Right. Yeah. I mean, the idea of, of, of speaking um, for me has always been, I mean, I kind of cut my teeth speaking in the early 2000s. I traveled for a few years um, as an evangelist, and I spoke in, in big tent revivals and churches and prisons and youth groups and, and anywhere they'd give you a microphone and people to listen. Um, then I kind of stopped doing that and I went into real estate sales. Um, but when I started speaking with Keller Williams in um, probably 07, 08, people will ask me sometimes, how do you, you, know, how do you become a speaker? And I think there's a couple of things. One, I don't know that you become one. I think that you have a great message and you have something to teach and you have something that you're good at and you're worthwhile to listen to. And then the speaker piece shows up. I don't know people that go, you know what, someday I'm gonna be a speaker. If you don't have anything worthwhile to listen to, it doesn't matter how good you are at orating. It doesn't matter how good you are at presenting something. Um, and so, KW gave me the opportunity to, to travel and speak and teach. And, and then that grew into uh, um, the, the, probably the world's largest um, ever um, training program being called Bold. And that was, I did that from, from the late 09 until, well, we're still currently doing it. And then I've spoken on stages at KW as big as 22 and 23,000. And I've spoken on in, in stages of as little as three people that showed up. And at the end of the day, if you're willing to speak and if you're willing to teach other people and you want to see them win, you can be a speaker. Um, but it has to be worthwhile. Like you have to have something worth saying. Um, for me, it's always been like the biggest compliment I've ever had as a speaker is, Cody, I loved hearing your message. You're really authentic. And authenticism, if that's a word, um, has been now. something that I've worked hard at for years. Like, can I be, can I truly be myself? Can I be me? And does that help anybody? Lo love that. And I, how many loan officers do you think you have heard give their value proposition in their pitch, either from a stage or in person? You know, I, is I don't know if it's, thousands? I don't know if it's tens of thousands, but it's thousands for sure. Um, I mean, I don't know. I, I did like I, I looked at it one time and I thought, all right, the whole idea of like the idea of 10,000 hours, the idea of putting in 10,000 hours. Um, I'm real close to 10,000 hours um, on stage or, or on a microphone. And so I've seen thousands of, of loan officers come through and usually it's a matter of them providing lunch, which is perfectly acceptable. Awesome, awesome, great. Or maybe they paid for the room or maybe they hired the speaker or whatever. And what happens, what happens 99 times out of 100 is that lender stands up almost um, with chagrin, almost apologetic, like, hey guys, so sorry. Hate to be the person between you and lunch. Just had to talk for a minute. And then nine minutes later, the only thing they've actually said is uh, we give a, a, a good service. Uh, we have really competitive rates and we're going to close on time. And the challenge with that is that should be that should be the barrier of entry. If you can't do that, 
you should just, I mean, you guys can cut my feet anytime. If you can't do that, you should get the hell out. Like you should just go somewhere else and do something else. That should be the, the entry level. Like, of course, we're going to do that. And the people that are sitting in the room, that would be like, that would be like going to a wedding and hearing somebody say like the groom to the bride saying, you know what? Listen, babe, I looked up monogamy online and I'm going to do my best. It's going to be awesome. And we're going to work real hard at this. That's about how well that goes over, which means it doesn't do anything. The best lenders I've seen that come through the door, the only thing they talk about is my job is to partner with you and help you take your business from selling 20 units a year to 40, to help you take your team from doing X volume to X, Y volume, to help you on the side of customer service to make you look amazing. That's the only thing those realtors sitting in those seats want to hear. They assume you give good rates. If you can't close on time, get out. At least lie about it and tell them you're going to close on time. I mean, for God's sakes, do something. But at least tell them that. But that becomes the sales pitch. And I don't, I don't know, guys, that it's worthless, but it's one step above worthless. It truly is. It doesn't matter to them. What they want to hear is what's in it for them. We're going to help you increase your production. We're going to help you build your team. We're going to help you with your systems and models. And listen, because we do so much for you, there'd be nobody on planet Earth that you'd send your leads to than me to help close loans. Well, we're going to ask more questions about that in the last quarter of this call. We, I think we've set the table, guys. This is a very special leader in the mortgage coach community. Please turn off your mobile apps. Stop multitasking. We're going to ask some really important questions. You're going to get some takeaways from this. Todd, before we get into the, the topic at hand, anything else you want to do to set the table? Any takeaways from what Cody's already said? Absolutely. First off, I'm bold. Uh, Cody wasn't my teacher, but uh, I've been through that training. And I would just say, when you're thinking about what Cody just said about helping someone go from X to X to Y level, um, the way to do it is to learn their models and systems that he just talked about. And so um, for me, when I was an originator, I built a team. And so therefore, um, I had a team like the systems and models that that Keller Williams teaches in the modern, uh, the MREA in, in their uh, in their books, all Gary Keller's teaching. And so if you're thinking about how do you help an agent grow, learn their models and systems. I, I took every different Keller Williams class that I could take. There's no better way to sit in there and be part of it and learn what it is that they're going to do. And I've sat through countless numbers of Cody's classes. He's always the best dressed speaker and really one of the most respected. Um, and so I would just tell you, jump in on that. And I'm super excited to see where the rest of this call goes. I'm going to add one thing to that, Todd, because what you didn't say was that you participated. Because you did. Yeah, well, I was in it. You I was didn't a member. Show of up. You didn't just stand in the back of the room and say, hey, guys, I'm so glad to see you working on your business instead of in it. Like, you didn't do that. You were actually in it. You weren't there. You were in it. And those are two entirely different things. Well, and plus the concept I learned were concepts that helped me grow my mortgage team. And so, you know, from that perspective, the thing I loved about Bold, it was the first, it probably one of the only coachings I've done that's all about mindset and brings mindset in. And so as we're going to, you know, transition over into, you know, how to win when you're losing, um, I think it's really critical that, that uh, loan officers, you know, take hold of that. And, uh, and it's just, there's no better way to, to become friends with real estate agents, which leads to business with real estate agents than sitting there and learning what they're learning with them. And you have to be, you know, all in when you're doing it. Business scaling is business scaling, whether it's selling loans, selling homes, or selling fences and roofs. It's just business scaling. So, so true. And for any new loan officers that just tuned into this, while Todd is the CEO of Win by Noon, Todd has built a branch in Phoenix, Arizona that does over 500 loans a year. You know, we're talking about and consistently year after year. And while he's now an entrepreneur and an industry leader, his wife runs that branch and it's still scaling, doing 500 plus loans a year. So guys, you're, you're, you've got a moderator with me that knows about scale and he is learning realtor strategies. So Cody, let's get into the topic at hand. You know, I asked you like, Hey, what do you want the theme of this to be? And you called out that how to win when you're losing. So let's just start with how do people know when they're losing? Like, I don't think anybody's in this call going, I'm losing. So right. give us some thoughts on that. I think there's a couple of things. And these are, these are like my thoughts around it. I think a few things. Number one, I think that anybody who succeeds at a really, really high level has a self paranoia of losing it all. Not a paralysis of losing it all, but a paranoia. Like if I don't, if I don't keep up with this, I'm out. 
If I don't keep moving, I'm out. Listen, wherever you live, wherever you work, there's always been a top mortgage gal, always been a top real estate guy. There's always been a top person. The only thing that's consistent is that it doesn't remain the same name forever. There's always somebody at the top. There's always somebody who's gotten there. And the truth is everybody gets to the top of the mountain the same damn way. They get to the top of the mountain by scratching, clawing, fighting, standing up and wondering what the hell am I doing on this mountain? Nobody wakes up there. Nobody wakes up and goes, whoa, whoa, what the hell happened? How did I get here? No one's ever done that. And you've never heard Oprah, you've never heard Oprah interview somebody at the top of their game and they say, you know what, Opes, the one, which is why I don't think they'll let me on the show, but you know what, Opes, the, the, it, it took me less time than I expected. It cost me less money than I thought it would. And it was a lot less work than I ever thought. I just went to work. No, no one's ever said that because it's not true. And if it is true for someone, no one wants to hear it because you can't duplicate that model anyway. And so everybody gets there the same way. The challenge though is uh, you're always losing at something. Nothing is, there's always a polarity. If there's a win somewhere, there's something you're losing at. If you're killing it somewhere, there's something that you're not killing it at. And one of the things that I've seen so many of my friends do that are incredibly successful that I've done too, is sometimes you, sometimes you believe your own press. It's okay to have press. I think you should. I think you ought to talk about how you're amazing. Like I'll pick on realtors for a second. Realtors, which I are one, are amazing at being number one in their market at selling homes two o'clock to three o'clock on Tuesdays with a blue door. Like we are all number one at something and we're great at telling the story of it. And I think that's smart until you read and then believe your own. I think that's where there's deception, self-deception, of, um, of believing, hey, I'm there. I need you to believe you're never there. I need you to believe that no matter how far you go, no matter how big you get, you haven't reached your capacity yet. The challenge is that we tend to compare ourselves to other people and we compare our production to other people and we begin to think, oh, I've beat it or oh, I've become. The truth is you haven't. And I would have you to, to focus on what you're losing at almost more than what you're winning at. And I know that seems counterintuitive for a, for a motivational speaker, but the truth is go find, you're already good at what you do. Go find the stuff that you're not good at and go, all right, how do we increase this? How do we build that? Like maybe you're no good at this part of the market. Go and hire someone to do that part of the market. Go and build it into your processes or your systems. The richest people I know have a healthy paranoia that if they don't keep moving, someone's about to take it all away. Like it's why people like the three of us and probably almost all of you watching, it's why you're terrible at napping. You're terrible at it because the second your ass hits the couch, you're like, whoa, whoa I have lost all of my business. I'm broke, lost my job. Like that's a, that's a healthy paranoia of if I don't keep moving, it's gonna all go away. And I don't think that's negative. So I think that at the end, to answer your question in one sentence, um, I need you to know that you're losing at something. And then how do you win while you're doing it? Because losing at something doesn't mean you're losing at everything. But the flip is true. Winning at something doesn't mean you're winning at everything. But because we're extreme behaviors and we're extreme types of people, we want to put it all in one bucket. We get an award which we can't sell and make money with anyway, but we get an award at some luncheon at the end of the year and we go, cool, I'm winning. No, no, what are you losing at? And if you're not, you're certainly not growing. One of my best friends, um, he wants his, um, his conversion rate for sellers to be 60%, 60%. Meaning when he goes to give a presentation, Six times out of 10, he wants them to sign. Four times out of 10, he wants them to say, nope, I'm going to hire somebody else. Because what it proves to him is that he's pushing outside of his boundary of comfort. The person that says, yeah, 99% sign with me, you're probably just working with friends and family. That's not cool. That's not, you're not pushing your business. You're not building. You're just maintaining. Love that. So remember guys, put your questions down below. Um, we're already getting some traction in our Facebook group. Deborah Bird said that she, she loved that program. She said something about she got her 100 pen 
going to the event? What's what's the hundred pin? The hundred pin is it's a uh, the hundred pin is a is a group that maybe at the end of the day would be four percent, maybe six percent of all the people that have gone through bold, which is tens of thousands. And the hundred pin is is for people who did a hundred contacts in one day. Hundred contacts in a day, meaning um, we've said hello and offered our service 100 times in one day. That's a lot of phone calls. The fastest that it happens is usually five to six hours. The slowest is 14 to 16 hours. The average is about eight. But that is a heavy day of lead generation where you have to introduce yourself. It has to be voice to voice. It can't be text, can't be email. It's gotta be voice to voice and you have to offer your service. And it's, it's reserved for very few of our people. And we used to give out, we still do, like this little pin that says 100. And it just means did 100 contacts in a day. But the reason that we do it, no business in mortgage or in, or in real estate will probably make 100 contacts day in, day out, day in, day out. Like that's not a sustainable model for a solo person. Your team might make 100 contacts in a day. Like my team today better make 1,000 contacts or 1,500 contacts a day. There are a whole bunch of people. But the reason we do it is that the day that you go to make, let's say that your model is 20 a day. After you've done 100, it makes 20 feel like T-ball. On that day that you're on contact 12 or 15 and you're like, man, this sucks. Like who turned off the faucet? You look back and you go, wait, hang on. Remember that day I did 100 in a day? I could find eight more. (laughs) Child's play. This is cake. That's why we do the hundred in a day is just to show you what you could do when you truly commit so that on the days that it's not easy, you go back and it's memory recall and you're like, oh, wait, hang on. Remember that day I wanted this? I can do it again. And so for people like Deborah, those two and three and four percenters, like it's an, it's an exclusive group of people. And one of the things that we coach is uh, I don't need you to do it every day. You probably won't. I don't, I don't want you to. But maybe every two or three months, you go, you know what? I'm just going to go back. I'm going to knock out 100 tomorrow. It's going to be grueling and hard. But it makes me realize how easy every other day is. Wow. So I did not know that. Uh, so, Deborah, now there's another reason why you are the top social media coach in the mortgage coach community. You are, you are a black belt at mortgage coach. You, you are a bold 100 uh, you've gone through Amplify. Uh, now I know why you create such great content for hundreds of mortgage coach members. So, so Todd, let's go back and forth. I've asked a couple of questions. Why don't you ask one? I'll ask the next one. Remember community, we'll pull some from you guys. So if you have questions, put them down below. Todd, what's the next question? Hey, Cody, what do you think it takes to win at the highest level? For me, the, the highest level is two things. Number one, what are you doing that builds somebody else? I think in the beginning, and I don't think it's wrong. I think in the beginning, you're all about making your own money. And I think you should. That's a very smart way to to start. But nobody nobody goes to their highest version of themselves like that. There's a book, um, and it's probably 14, 13 years old, maybe 15, but it's, it's called Drive by a guy named Daniel Pink. And Daniel, the author, makes the comment in the book Drive. He says, money is the only thing that matters when you don't have it. And money is the last thing that matters when you do have it. In other words, when you're worried about your mortgage, it's all you could worry about. Like you've got to make some dough. You got to have some shekels. Though as soon as you're not worried about paying your mortgage every month, you're like, good. I'm not that worried about money. I'm worried about significance. I'm worried about leaving a legacy. And you either do it one of two ways. One, you build significance and legacy when you don't need to, or you wait until age becomes the prompt. This is why people in their 50s, 60s, and 70s will quite often stop and go, wait, what have I done that's going to outlast me? What have I done that's still going to be around when I'm not? Though if you do it earlier in life, and there's no, like you're never too late, like I'm the believer that if I'm breathing, the best is yet to come. I'm the guy who still thinks if I'm still here, there's a reason for this. Like, I don't think I designed all this anyway. And so you either believe that you're a spiritual being have a, having a physical experience or you're a physical being having a spiritual experience. And I believe if I'm here, there's a reason to that. So how you win at the highest possible level, you take care of yourself, 
It's that old oxygen mask in the airplane scenario. Like we all know it, do that. But then as fast as you can, how many more people can you help? That's when you realize how far you can go. And that's where you get pressure. Like when you look down and you go, huh, I've kind of made most of my money that I need. I just got to keep tapping this flywheel and I'm good. Nobody goes to bed at night thinking I'm killing it at that. And quite frankly, it's selfish. The highest producers I know go to bed at night and wake up in the morning thinking, who have I helped? Like, do I have a millionaire in my business? Any one of us can become a millionaire and any one of us would go make a million. That's easy. The challenge is how many millionaires can you create? And that's what gets your fire pumped. Like, that's what makes you go, man, it is my job. Like, someone's going to look down someday and say, listen, my kids went to an incredible private school because of what you taught me. My family went on XYZ vacation because of what we did together. At some point, if all you're doing is making yourself a bunch of money, there's not a lot of fulfillment in that. Like, that's not, nobody goes to bed and goes, this money sure feels good. I love people do, but hopefully not in this community. So, so I think we have now filled up the message boards with two hours of content. And guys, we do have a hard stop at 10 o'clock. So keep the questions coming because there will be more interviews and maybe we can answer some of these uh, with chat, but we got a lot of questions. I'm going to try to do as much. What is winning X? So Cody, what is winning at blank? And you guys are loan officers. So get ready to put in more questions down below and hear those. But before I do that, Cody, um, one of the things that Todd and I um, launched last week is for loan officers, do it a TCA a day. That's a total cost analysis because we know that if they go from being a fee worksheet rate quoting loan officer to delivering a strategy, and it really just comes down to solution selling. If they can do that every day, one time, they're going to be better over time. And then also part of the initiative and what, you know, we, we have this poster that's on win by noon. One side is TCA a day challenge. And on the other side, it's a CMA a day. So right. we're, we're telling loan officers, hey, for you to be better, create this solution selling, total cost analysis one time a day, and go out there and advocate to realtors that do a CMA, CMA a day. Like we're hearing in most markets, it's starting to slow down a little bit. So what, what are your thoughts on the CMA a day challenge for agents. You think it's a good idea? I think it's brilliant. I think that the first step is like what you said, TCA a day, or I mean, what, what you've really done is you've, and I'm going to back up a second. What you've really done with mortgage coach is you've, whether knowing or unknowingly, you have followed uh, what Seth Godin calls and titled the book purple cow. And Seth, one of my favorite authors, he was driving past a herd of cows and he looked over and he's like, huh, they're all brown and white, like all cows are. And he thought to himself, he's a marketeer, right? And so he thought, what would it look like if one of those damn things was purple? What would that one look like? And if you're a mortgage originator using Mortgage Coach, what you're doing in your market is you're a purple cow. At some level, we have to all understand as a real estate agent, as a mortgage lady or a mortgage guy, you look like a, you look like a penguin. To the consumer, we all look the same. You and I both know it's not true. Like as a realtor, as a realtor, I know like, okay, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an LO, do you know any bad LOs in your market? Don't point at people, that's rude. But I know that you know bad LOs. Like you see them close a deal and you're like, what? <laughs> I know this guy. What are you talking about? They actually sold a loan. And then you see that they did multiple and you're like, what? How big is their family anyway? Like, like you just wonder how the hell did they get that lead? Like, where'd that come from? Who worked with them? The reality though is this. If you could make yourself the purple cow and understand that as a consumer, like as a consumer, they see all realtors the same. They see all LOs the same. Because to the consumer, they kind of are. It's the same way you shop for airline tickets, by the way. It's the same way that you look at two or three sites. You don't really care which one it comes from. To you, it's kind of all the same. And the moment that you understand that and the moment that you make peace with it, I think is the first step to becoming a purple cow. And you go, cool, I don't need them to see me different. I need to earn the right for them to see me different. And those are two wildly different things. The third question is, who do I need to become 
that they can only see me different. When you get to that level, now you're talking about world-class service. Now you're talking about world-class deliverables. Now you're talking about what do I do that literally nobody else who walks the planet that has my title can do? What can I do that's wildly different? And when you do that, you're building a moat around your business. And the moat around your business, like if you were gonna do a CMA a day as a realtor, if you did one CMA every business day, that would be 18 to 20 CMAs a month. And I'm going to assume if you're doing a CMA, it's probably because you're giving a listing presentation. It doesn't matter how good or how bad you are at real estate. If you're giving a listing presentation 18 or 20 times a month, eventually you're gonna take 10 listings a month. You're gonna get good enough at doing it. And eventually if you take 10, I mean, I remember the, like I, I teach this class called seven steps to 10 listings. And I remember the first time I had 10 listings in a month. It was like my second or third year in the business. And I remember on month two, like right after having 10 in a month, and maybe you could relate. It was like, like the 10th of the next month, I get a phone call from a seller that goes, Hey, we're real worried. Uh, we don't want to, we don't want to, like, we don't want to impose. You're obviously a professional. We don't want to second guess. Like these are these are clients from God, right? They're like, we love you, uh, but we're a little worried. We haven't had any showings. And as I looked it up on the, on, on, the, on the computer machine, I was like, oh crap. I know why they haven't had any showings. I forgot to put it in the MLS. I was so busy the first time I hit 10 in a month, I felt like my hair was on fire. And so when I explained that to them, they were gracious and kind and fired me and freed me up to go work with some other sellers. But two things happened there, guys. Number one, I wasn't used to it yet. There came a day that if I didn't have 10 listings in a month, I felt slow. I was like, what's going on? It's been a few days since I put a new listing on. Like, what's, something's wrong with the matrix. It was just me getting used to it, which is one of the things I've learned about success. A ceiling becomes a floor when you break through it but you have to break through it. The other thing I realized was this, because I had 10 new listings, I couldn't cry about that one that fired me for very long. And it's when I learned one of the greatest business things I've learned, tactics, it's called the five minute funeral. It's okay to have a five minute funeral, man. It's fine. I'm a salesman. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna be sad when something doesn't work, but damn it, I had nine more I had to go work on right away which means I couldn't sit around and mope about it. Have you ever met somebody like as LOs? I know you guys hear this. You, have you met a realtor who's still worried about some deal that died nine months ago? And you're like, dude, this thing's been dead long. I mean, this thing's been dead for a year. What are you talking about? It's dead, 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 dead. Get over it. Like move on. Like we've all dealt with this, right? Um, for me, at the end of the day, what I'm building has to match who I'm becoming. And that's the litmus test. Like that's the, that's the mirror coming back. So if you're gonna do a TCA a day or a CMA a day, all that is is a habit. And when you're doing it, it might be week number one, you only do three, so what? But it might be on week 50 that you're like, you know what, knocking down one a day is now just habitual. Like it's just automatic. I don't even, I don't wanna say I don't have to work at it because you'll always work but you won't have to worry about it. It'll just be natural because it's going to duplicate who you've become. Have you become the type of person who does a TCA a day or a CMA a day? And when you have, it's just the result. It's the byproduct of who you are. No, no doubt. And I love the point you made. Not only is it a powerful sales and marketing strategy, not only if you do it, you're going to get business. It's who you become by doing that. You made, uh, a, you, you made a comment to me real quick. You made a comment to me, Dave, the first time I talked with you. You were fine explaining mortgage coach, like you were great. But the moment you started talking about the consumer it helped, you were excited. Like it changed everything. So while I love what mortgage coach has done and what it does for LOs, I think at the end of the day, anybody who uses it, actually has a passion to help human beings. And if you have a passion for that, this is just a tool. This is just a lever or a button to make it happen faster and to do it more duplicatable. So I think at the end of the day, it's just like a realtor who does a really good job. Those people usually just love people and doing more business is just an avenue of helping more human beings. And people smell that from a mile away.
such a such a good point. And Bradley, who just commented, uh, he said, "I'm new in the business. I'm trying to build my realtor network." any tips on how to approach agents cold calling. So, so Bradley, one, we gave you pure gold last week with Jeremy Forcier on Friday. He gave 15 minutes of that. But I would say, keep it simple, my friend. Like pick this CMA a day conversation. Use some of Jeremy's scripting. Uh, by the way, Cody, Jeremy's one of the top loan officers on planet earth. He's just one of those guys doing it all right. Uh, and so follow that roadmap, but Todd, I'm going to give it back to you, but I want to just see if Cody has some feedback quickly for Bradley on that question on how to approach an agent. Two things. Number one, everything you want lives on the other side of consistency. Number two, the treasure you seek is almost always in the cave that you've been avoiding. And so the treasure you seek, the realtor, right? By the way, I don't believe and and you guys are the mortgage pros. I'm not. I don't know that most LOs need to work with every realtor in town. I think most loan originators could have an incredible book of business if you've got 30 realtors who love and adore you that all send you two to four transactions a month. You don't need them all. You just need 30 that you are tight with. And so until you have 30 you're tight with, your job is I've got 30, I've got five, so I've got 25 missing. I need 20, I need to identify 25 more people that I could earn and build value with that when they think of loans, they only think of me. And if you can do that, you've got an incredible book of business. Powerful. Todd, any takeaways from that? And what's the next question? Well, you know, of course, I love that whole thing that, you know, everything that you want lives on the other side of consistency. So, of course, that makes me think of habits, Cody. And, and when I think of people who have really strong habits, I think of you. So, you know, how do you, you know, how do you talk about habits? How do you encourage people around habits? I think there's a couple of things with habits. Number one, um, I don't think that we choose our future. I think that we, I, I don't, I don't think we're that smart. I just don't think we're that good. Like I've met too many human beings. We are not that brilliant. We're just not. I don't think we choose our future. I think we choose our habits and our habit dictates our future. I was talking to someone the other day and they said, man, that person is really rare. And I said, no, they're not. No, they're not. Damn you, they're not. They're just a human being. Their activities or their habits or their choices, those are wildly rare, which makes them look like they're rare. But I need you to go back to the genesis of the comment, that person's rare. When someone says that person's rare, what they're really telling themselves inside is, I can't be like them. That's what we're actually saying. It's a weird compliment. That person's really rare, which means to myself, my subconscious hears, you can't be like that. When in reality, that person's not rare, the choices they make are rare. And so when you think about it, like we'll just create a word, it's called choicefulness. Like what choices do you make? When you win at something, you win at everything, which is why, which is why when somebody loses 10 pounds or gets fit in some area of their life, they get better at everything. You have never met someone who's gotten fit who didn't increase everything else at the same time. You have never met somebody who's become a better parent who didn't at the same time build their business stronger. Because when you win at something, you can win at everything. When you benefit somewhere, you can benefit everywhere. Because just like the old saying is this, how you do anything is how you do everything. Which is why you would teach your kids, don't half-ass anything. Because if you do, you're going to do it everywhere. It's why a parent watching their kid on the field will say, whoa, 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 whoa. Why are you walking? You don't walk. I didn't raise a walker. You run. You run. Because you know as a parent, if I let them walk out here on this field, playing soccer when they're five, I mean, come on. If I let them walk out here when they're five, what if they're walking it in when they're 35? And if they're going to walk it in on the field, what if they walk it in in their marriage? That ain't going to work. What if they walk it in in their company or their business? That ain't going to work. Like you would know it. The challenge is all of us, especially those that have raised kids, or if you know anybody who's ever raised kids, you're also qualified. We have to be willing to talk to ourselves the same way. So do you encourage people then to start with little, little wins or big wins, or how do you tell people to approach that? Just little things. I mean, I don't know, like for me in my world, what are my little wins? Like if I could stack up a bunch of little wins, eventually I've got some big ones. And one of the things I've learned, it's, it's from the, um, the power of habit. Uh, Charles Duhigg, I think, is the author. He talks about um, uh, habit stacking. 
and the idea that if you could just stack a little habit on another one. So here's one that I've taught. Here's one that I've taught realtors for years. Nobody on here needs to think about brushing their teeth. You either do it out of habit or you don't do it and you've got dentures. Either way, nobody has to worry about it. Like you just do it or you don't, right? And so you would take something like brushing your teeth. And what you would do is when you brush your teeth, you immediately send a message to a lead or a client or someone you'd like to be in business with. And that's the easiest way to build the habit of lead generation because it's just, a, it's just a response. It's a mechanism where you don't have to think about it. It's why, like when we teach affirmations, and everybody says, yeah, we believe in affirmations, they work, blah, 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 blah. Or they say, no, affirmations don't work. Either way, they just prove the point that we're right. And the easiest way to say affirmations is to go, cool, every time I eat, I'm going to say three affirmations. Because you're going to eat. Like, I've been in lots of rooms with lots of human beings. There's one thing we all do really well, and that's eat. Like, we're all good there. We're fine there. And if every time you shove something in your mouth to eat you say two or three affirmations before you know it, you've become amazing at affirmations. Or you spend five years talking about how you might do affirmations one day. So you pick something that when it happens, immediately you do another. And I start with the small stuff, like just little things, like little habits. How do I have little tiny wins? Because the mind doesn't see the difference. Winning's a habit, but so is losing. So guys, we got 20 minutes left. I've got more questions than we can ask, although I've got a couple good ones. I just got a text from someone, Cody, that this is the first time they've heard you. And they're like, this guy is on fire. Where'd you get him? And then, of course, we got a lot of people that are like, oh, he trained me. I've seen him multiple times on stages. But he, he wants to know where are the best ways to follow you. And, and also, do, if, if someone wanted to sign up for your training, like they wanted to learn from you, what are some of the best ways to do that? A couple of things. Number one, I'm honored that somebody would say that. So thank you. Um, easiest place to connect is probably Instagram. Uh, Cody Gibson one, just the numeral one at the end. Um, Facebook is uh, Facebook is full. Um, but when I feel bad about myself, I go there and look because it says I'm full of friends. I'm at my limit, so I'm okay there. Uh, but Cody Gibson one is the simplest. My email is Cody Gibson at kw.com, and my mobile number um, 907-529-5172. I'm doing what each one of you is doing right now, which means like somebody made the comment, blah, 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 blah. How do you double or triple your business during a pandemic? And I'm like, how the hell am I supposed to know? I've never lived through one scooter and neither of you, like you and I are at the same level. We don't know. We've never done this before. And so we're learning as we go. Now, the habits remain the same. The truisms and the consistencyisms, those remain the same. What we do know is that if we got to win at something to win at everything, so go win. Um, but we're all learning. Like we're all, we're all learning as we go. But what I'm doing is I'm waking up earlier than I've ever woken up. I'm staying up later than I've ever, than I've ever stayed up. And I'm working more hours than I've ever worked right now. And most speakers won't admit that to you. Because there's some, type of, there's some type of cloak of goodness or cloak of, of, of pride about working less. Screw you. Like what I'm doing right now is working more because I don't know what to do. I don't know what works right now. We're in the weirdest economy we've ever had. Things that don't make sense are happening. Things that should be happening aren't. Like, I don't even know. We're getting, like, as much as we've slowed down in many markets, which is like, oh my God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, baby Jesus. Like, we've slowed down a little bit. Even though we've slowed down a little bit, we're still getting, like, there's some homes that we're getting 25 or 35 offers on. What are you going to do with 35 offers? We had 101 offers on a listing. What are you going to do with 101 offers? You know how much work that is? Like for a realtor right now, they are working harder than they've ever worked. LOs, you're working harder than you've ever worked. Like you're having to write 20, like 90% um, um, letters or, or guarantee letters or whatever it is that you call them. You're having to write 20 to get one deal to go. As an LO, you're having to call that listing agent saying, listen, this guy is as good as cash. Trust me, they're good. They've already been through underwriting. All we need is an appraisal and we're ready to roll. Like you're having to sell it and you're having to sell the idea that what you do works. All right, so back to the original question. Um, if you wanted to take advantage of, of like the, 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 the very next thing that I do 
Um, there's always something going on. Instagram is the easiest way to see it. But I have a two day event coming in Portland. It's very, very small. It's capped at 30 or 32 people. Meaning I kept two for my friends, but it's capped at 30 or 32 people. I'm usually like the smallest room I'm usually in is two or 300 up to 20,000, which is fun, but it's not interesting. What's interesting is hanging out with 20 people. And so we did this two years ago. It's called the Experience Series. It's here in Portland. It's August 2nd, August 3rd. Both days, full days. Then on August the 4th, Wednesday, uh, we're going to go skydiving. And so the Experience Series is we mastermind, we teach. Like it'll be me and a couple of other speakers. One of the speakers I've got coming, um, this guy runs the largest, um, the largest gym in America. He built one of the largest marketing platforms within Nike worldwide. The guy's a killer. Another speaker I've got, she's built the coolest fitness business I've ever seen. And she's worth, she's worth coming just to hear her speak. But the experience series isn't just business. One day we have, last year when we did it, we all went on helicopter rides. We rented a, a limo bus and went to a winery. So there's a few surprises in it, uh, but we're going to go on this amazing jet boat tour in Portland. Uh, we're going to go skydiving on the third day. You don't have to if you don't want to, but we're going to go skydiving on the third day. And then we have a private uh, spin class with Jesse Dooley, who is the most passionate, incredible business owner I've ever met. You're going to love her. If you come and you don't love it, we'll write you a check back. For, I mean, we don't want your money. But what Mortgage Coach did, can I share this with these guys? Yeah, go for it, man. What Mortgage Coach did um, for seven seats, Mortgage Coach has paid half of your, of your admission. So if you go to CodyGibson.com, you'll see the experience series. You'll see some more details on it. Mortgage Coach is prepaying half of your reg fee. So whatever cost you see on there, because there's a couple of options if you want this or that, um, they've paid half on your behalf. So if you want to take advantage of it, we can do seven of those. Um, just let us know, send me an email. You won't see a link for it because we're afraid of somebody using it that shouldn't. So just send me an email, Cody Gibson at kw.com. Let us know that you want to do it. My office will call you. We'll take care of payment and whatever the, the published fare is you see yours is half because of mortgage coach. So that was a long answer. Yeah. So, so guys, mortgage coach, our mission is to change how people get into debt in America. They should not get a fee worksheet, rate, payment, cash to close. When someone gets into debt, they should know how to get out of debt. They should look at strategies to optimize mortgages to build wealth with real estate. So how does that happen? Mortgage coach loan officers are the most successful loan officers in America. They're the most influential loan officers with agents. And one of the reasons why I partner with Todd Bookspan to do the Modern Real Estate Summit is we want real estate agents to know that mortgages are strategic. It's not just a commodity, you know, rate, payment, I close on time. Those are table stakes. It's about the strategy behind it. So guys, I want Mortgage Coach members to be the best. And the way you be the best is you learn from agents. So uh, if you do sign up with Cody, I guess I'll know your name. Cody's going to let me know. But but remember, guys, we're, we're help, we want to help you be the best you can be. We think Cody is as good as it gets. We've already invited him back to the next Modern Real Estate Summit. Todd and I will be announcing the dates soon. I'm not going to tell you the dates right now, but within a couple of weeks, we're going to tell you when the next modern mortgage summit is, the next modern real estate summit. And you can be assured, Cody will be on there for 18 minutes. The guys, if you want to get two full days with this guy, do some life with this guy, learn some from some teachers that he thinks he's passionate about, uh, check it out. Todd, any comments on that or any next questions? Well, you know, I just, I'm thinking, how can I get to Portland for the second, third of, of August, you know, I, and then I'm also thinking, man, I'm just a wuss. I have to admit it here that I'm this skydiving thing, but maybe that's the treasure in the cave that I haven't been willing to, to look in. But, uh, you know, I, we're going to rent, we have a limo bus on that third day, Wednesday, we're going to drive about an hour from Portland, mastermind the whole way. We're going to all jump out of an airplane. And then we're going to mastermind the whole way back with some wine and some cheese. They won't let us drink before we get on the plane. But on the way back, we're going to have some wine and some cheese. And it's, it's a cool, like, like top, when you see the price, you'll understand. It's a top level experience. But if you've never jumped out of an airplane before, you'll be shocked what goes through your mind right before you do it. And you'll be shocked how many places in your life that once you do that, there's a reason why when you go to a Robbins event, they have you walk on fire. 
It's not to walk on fire. It's to know you've done it. And when you face something, there's an old saying, fake it till you make it. That's horseshit. The reality is you face it till you make it. No one needs to fake anything. You face it and you go, you know what? I'm scared to death right now. Am I really doing this? This is stupid. What am I doing? Why? I just did it. When you do that, business becomes easy. So powerful. I've walked on fire a couple of times with Tony and uh, it was truly mind blowing. And I remember building up to it. I'm like, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to tell people I did it. Everybody says that. I'm not doing it. I'm not in my head. I'm going to, you know, Mattel is my girlfriend, my wife now, but she's my girlfriend at the time. I'm like, yeah, of course I'm going to tell everybody I did it. But once you do it, bro, it's crazy. So uh, anyways, Cody, I can't tell you how fired up I am to have you as a leader in the mortgage coach community. Uh, Please let me know who takes you up on that offer. Obviously I'm going to know because I'm going to get an invoice. Todd, what's the next question or anything else you want to pull out of the mirror? You know, we've got LOs all coming back to this whole idea of, you know, how if you're trying to break into a new market and become the purple cow, what are some tips to get a realtor to give you a shot? I think that that's always a common theme here, Cody. People want to know, how do I get the realtor to to at least sit down with me so I can do business? Any suggestions there? Three suggestions. Number one, realtors are the easiest sale to make because they love to buy things. Realtors are suckers. The only reason that we're tough on you when you call us is that we're afraid we're going to say yes if you get us to sit down. A realtor is the same person that when they're at a resort and they give the uh, the whole come to the presentation thing, they go, no, 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 because they know if they sit down, they're buying. So what you have to understand is that when they say no or no thank you or they lie to you and they say, I've already got my favorite lender, that's garbage. There's always two. There's a first choice and a second choice, and your business can grow as big as you want it to grow as long as your first choice or second choice. So a great conversation to a realtor is to say, listen, I get it. I love it. I love that guy too. If I didn't do loans, I'd probably use him. Great. Perfect. Love him. Love her. She's awesome. I just want to be your second choice. As long as I'm your second or your first choice, there's going to come a day that person's out of town, can't do it. They retire or um, I take them out with the hit squad because they're too good, but something's going to happen. And as long as I'm your first or second choice, you got to remember Avis back in the 1990s built their entire business by saying they're number two and their whole marketing against Hertz. Hertz was number one by a mile and Avis was like, shit, we're never going to be number one. So we can't do it. So Avis said, you know what? We're number two. And because we're number two, we work harder. We just work harder. We work harder because we have to. And so when you become someone's number two choice, just tell them the truth. Like, listen, how about we quit using scripts and dialogues and we start using the truth? I'm your number two lender, which means I'm going to work harder. I'm just going to be there. I'm going to work harder. Send me your grinder. The one that no one wants to work, send me that file. I will find a way. Like, send me that one. And all you have to do is be a pest until you're a guest. Realtors are easy but they don't sound easy. They say things that aren't true, like, nope, I'm happy forever. There is no realtor happy forever. It's why they're at a different brokerage every 15 minutes. No one's happy forever. And all you have to do is be persistent. Now, the second piece to it is this. You damn well better be interesting. Like, what about you is interesting to that person? Like, there's a lender here in town that I do not want to work with. I don't. I got lots of great lenders but the guy knows I love to play golf. And he's like, you wanna go play golf? And I'm like, oh God, like he's got me. Like right there, it's like, shoot. Like, how am I gonna say? And he invited me to go play somewhere that I can't go play without him. And I'm like, oh, son of a gun. Like I know what's going to happen now. And all you have to do is be interesting. Being interested or being interesting is good, but being interested, that's a game changer. So what about that realtor is important to them that becomes important to you? And I don't think you need to change who you are. You don't have to fake anything. Just go find the tribe that you work well with. All you need is 30 realtors who send you two or three transactions a month. And you look down and you go, hmm, I'm doing 75 units a month. There's not a person on this call right now who couldn't add 75 units a month or love their income at 75 units a month. You realize how much money that is? And you don't need every realtor in town. You just need 30 that send you two or three. That's it. And then how hard is it for you to take care of 30? You can have 30 golden eggs and take care of 30 golden eggs. 
That's easy. Taking care of 200 golden eggs? I don't know, man. That might be a little bit tough. You might not be able to do that. But you go find 30 killers. What if you, what if you were the, uh, the loan originator in your city that instead of begging for leads or begging for realtors, what you did instead is you were like, no, hang on a second. Let's take a tip from doctors who have the audacity to put up a banner that says now accepting new patients. What? Are you kidding me? I'm waiting for the loan originator that says, you know what? I'm now accepting new realtors. I had two that died or I buried them. And so I've got space for two new killers to work in my business with me. How about we just flip the script? How about you stop begging us to give you a chance and you start giving us so much value, we can't help it but to give it to you. So much gold, brother. So for those of you that missed the keynote where Cody gave one of the top keynotes of the Modern Mortgage or Modern Real Estate Summit, that's still available. We're still selling passes for the Modern Real Estate Guide. Uh, we'll put a link down below to that. If you're watching this in the recording, Cody gave you a link where to sign up. He gave you his email address if you didn't write it down. If you're watching this in YouTube, which we know we have a huge YouTube audience, just look at the show notes down below. You'll have contact for Cody. You'll have a link to get um, access to the Modern Real Estate Guide. Also, we'll put a link to the CMA a day program. Watch that call I did with Jeremy Forcier, you know, for that new loan officer. I, I hope your biggest takeaway from this was a quote that Cody said, and I've never heard it said just like this, be a pest till you're a guest. And all the fortune is in the follow-up. So if you just work hard, if you are consistent, if you be a guest or a pest until you're a guest, you're going to get there, my brother. Uh, do a total cost analysis a day. Get your agents to do a CMA a day. Cody, you're, last you are you are only bothering me. I got to say this because I didn't and I should. You are only bothering me if you don't have anything worthwhile. If you're walking through the airport and somebody drops their plane ticket, you're going to wonder why do they still have a paper plane ticket and not their mobile pass. But you get my point. If they drop their plane ticket, you're going to say, hey, hey, lady, ma'am, sir, you dropped your ticket. You're not going to go, whoa, I don't want to interrupt. I don't have an appointment. I don't know, you dumbass. You're going to interrupt because you need to tell them something. If you're at the grocery store and some lady's purse falls out of her cart, you're a jerk if you don't say something. Go, hey, hey, you dropped your purse. And the second you see lead generation this way is the last second you worry about lead generation. But it also puts the foot on your throat that what you have better be valuable. If what you have is valuable, like the mortgage coach and the, and the TCA, if, if, if you're actually about helping consumers learn how to get into debt, then lead generating to realtors is no longer a task. It's just something you do because you got to do it because that's how you help more people. And if you, if you, per, if you fight lead generation, lead generation is going to fight you and you're never going to win that fight. So powerful. So Todd, take us home. Mr. Win by Noon, give us your coaching notes. You know, coaching notes is to go back and listen to this. I, I've got uh, five pages of notes and I've had to write down the time so I can go back and re-listen to some of the stuff that, that Cody, you just said. It was, it was amazing. But, you know, I think it's really critical. We all know um, what, what we need to do, right? Cody said it. We know we got to go out there and lead generate, right? That's calling clients and that's calling real estate agents to build our business. And we choose not to do. We choose to go to the easy cave. So I think when we're done here, you're going to go to your email. You're going to look at your text messages and you're going to get distracted and not come back to what's important. So I would encourage you to look at your notes and figure out based off of what Cody said, right? What is the little habit maybe that you want to instill uh, today? Maybe it's write down three affirmations for when you're eating so that you actually um, change your mindset to be a positive person instead of a negative person. Um, you know, don't take a nap, right? We know now the billionaires don't do that either because they're worried about, about losing it. And I just know you've got an opportunity. You've got an opportunity right now to go out and uh, push yourself forward, or you got an opportunity to drop back in that deep hole of uh, being busy, being busy. And uh, Cody just gave us a gift of an hour of his time. And I would encourage you uh, to check out his event. There's no doubt that if you could spend a couple of days with him and uh, drive around and drink wine and jump out of a plane, that would be pretty dang awesome. Um, thanks to Dave and Mortgage Coach for uh, covering half of that. Um, I want you guys to go out and uh, add value and be wealthy like Cody said we should do. And re remember, guys, he's limiting that to 30 people. So there's probably not a bunch of lenders, if any lenders that are signed up to it. 
So for any of the mortgage coaches that go out there, not only are you getting the experience and the personal development, you're networking with agents. And let's just say you don't have a chance at earning any of their business, which if you're an interesting go-getter, you probably will get some loans, but you'll learn from them. Spending two days with agents is worth the price of going out and doing that event. Cody, bring the, bring the top lead that you have. The agent oh. you really want to work oh. with or the agent that gives you the most business, bring that person. You got two and a half days sitting with them and jumping out of a plane with them. Guess who they're never using again? Anybody but you. Can't wait to hear how that goes, brother. Anyways, thank you for an hour of your time. Uh, millions of dollars of wisdom. We're grateful, man. Have a great day, thank everybody. You. My pleasure. This, Thanks for having me. This call me. is a wrap. If you liked it, give it a like, share it with your mortgage friends. Take care, everybody.